Greetings in the name of Christ. I want to welcome all of you to First Baptist Church of Wyville today, especially if you are a guest. If you are a guest, we hope that you find this a place of worship. We hope that you experience God in this place in a mighty way. I would like to ask that all who are present, uh, if you would add your name to the friendship register, you will find those on the end of each pew. Uh, just add your name and then pass it on to the next person. Yes, in addition to your names, if you are comfortable sharing your information, we do ask that you provide us with a, uh, uh, an email address or maybe a phone number, even a home address. That way we could follow up with you after the worship service. But again, we do welcome you here with us this morning. Uh, a few announcements I want to call to your attention. Just a big reminder that um, following uh, our worship service today, we will go into a business session uh, to vote on our budget and to vote for our new deacons for the upcoming year. Uh, an exciting time as we begin to look and, and consider a new church year. So uh, if you're a member, if you could hang around after the worship service, uh, we would be grateful if you did that. Um, we always do open our worship with a moment of silence, and this is our time that we get to reflect uh, on exactly why we're gathered here today. I know we all come with anxieties, with worries, with all the things that have happened throughout our week, with all the things that are about to happen in the week to come, but this is our time to gather and to worship our Lord and our God and our Savior. So if you will, join me in a moment of silence. Amen.
Will you all join me in a word of prayer? Holy and loving God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we just give you so much thanks for this day, for this time that we can gather together in your house, your temple. God, we also ask that you make our hearts and our minds and our soul a temple to you as well. That we dedicate all of our lives, all that we are, to holy living, to listening to your word, to listening to your will for us. We ask that this hour be just that, that a time that we can hear and understand how you are speaking to us, how you are moving in our lives. God, we thank you for the people around us, for the, the friends, for the family, for our brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ who have committed so much to this church, to the body of Christ, to your will. God, help us to encourage one another, to lift one another up, to support one another, to be there for one another. God, most of all, help us to be there for you. To follow in the ways of Jesus Christ. To be who he taught us to be. Help our worship today, Lord, be pleasing in your sight. Selfless and willing to give of ourselves for your name's sake. It is in Jesus' holy name that we pray. Amen.
If you will, please join me in the responsive reading found printed in your bulletins from Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Who is like the Lord our God? Who is seated on high? Who looks far down on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous, joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. The hymn is 206, you probably don't need it, but we will start with the refrain, blessed be the name, because we have just said that, blessed be the name of the Lord from this time and forevermore. Let's sing together, starting with the refrain. Our epistle reading this morning is 1 Timothy chapter 2, 1 through 7. I urge then the first of I urge then first of all that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all goodness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved. And, come, and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind. The man Christ, all, excuse me, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed to all at that proper time. And for, the, and for this purpose, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying and a truth and faithful teacher of the Gentiles. The hymn is 406. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Let us stand together as we sing the solid rock.
Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings in our lives. We thank you for our families. We thank you for our church family. We thank you for the beauty of your creation. We thank you that we live in a country where we can worship in public. Lord, you've taught us that the way to show our love for you is to see Jesus in the faces around us and to share your gifts with others. We ask that you bless all that we bring today. Multiply our gifts as you multiplied the gift of the loaves and fish all those years ago so that others can see Jesus working in us. Amen. to show you all the awesome things I've got with me today. I've got this <gasps> iPad. Oh, it's so cool. I've got these like amazing DVDs. Horton Here's a Who. And I've got Finding Dory. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And I've got this like awesome rock star by your phone that I can sing. Okay, but wait, wait, you can't play with these. Because if you break these, that would be really bad. So, like, it's really important for me to have all these things all to myself because it just makes me feel important, and you're not allowed to play with them. 
I can't share. What what do you think what do you think about that? What why is that mean? That's right. So is it more important to have all these things and not share? Or do you think Jesus wants us to share our things? Share. That's right. God tells us that it's not important to have tons of stuff and toys and iPads and iPhones that he would rather us say, Adam, I want to share with you because I love you and I'm grateful for you being my friend. And, uh, you can't play with all those things at the same time. You can share them all at the same That's time. exactly right, Messiah. Good. That's right. Or even if you were playing with it, you can take turns. So what I want us to do this week is when we have all of our fun toys, I want us to try to remember that Jesus said, hey, it's important to share my things because it shows others that you love them and that Jesus loves them too. Okay, so let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for all the blessings you have given us. Help us to remember that it is important to show others we love them. Amen. For that awesome lesson, and as I listen to the children, their excitement, um, their energy, their intelligence, I'm just completely amazed at how often they get it. Amen. It is, isn't it amazing, and, and I think that's a good lesson for all of us, uh, especially for your pastor. I get to, to stand up here every, every Sunday and deliver a sermon. It's a wonderful reminder that uh, just because I deliver a sermon doesn't mean that there aren't a room full of people who get it. Amen? So I'm just uh, grateful for good lessons and for, for sharing. We share the gospel, don't we? With that, will you join me in a word of prayer? Loving God, ancient of days, so often we lift our prayers to you driven by our emotions, frightened by the evident dangers, natural and man-made, which the world faces, we cry out clumsily like little children. Enraged by the evident injustices the world faces, we strike out verbally to establish our own opposition. Squelched by grief, we try to find our voices and we attempt to take comfort in your promise that we will be heard even when we cannot speak. Aroused by love, we pray from our desire to reciprocate. And too often we forget that even in the midst of tragedy and trial, that there are moments of joy and we should share them. Dear God, there are so many times and so many ways in which we ought to hesitate. As natural disasters sweep across the world and calamity strikes when we least expect it, and so many are left scrambling around in chaos and confusion, we pray for prompt emergency response. We pray for the strength of purpose, not to let concern die away with the news cycle, but to energize the work and the workers that will be needed to rebuild. We pray for the ability to walk past our temptation to respond with impotent fury and to look for something unexpected, to look for miracles. In the midst of so many things which confound and discourage discourage us, gracious God, we give thanks for all of the blessings you provide this world every day. Help us not to be blind to the work that you are doing 
and forgive us when we act as if we are entitled to a greater life simply because we follow Jesus. Many of us who share these prayers live lives of relative comfort and safety. Many of us who share these prayers have access to resources that others need desperately, more access than they themselves have. Our ability to share what we can with those who need what we can share represents today as it did almost 2,000 years ago, the true riches of your kingdom. For that we offer our love, our praise, and our enthusiasm. It is in Jesus' holy name that we pray. Amen. say that again. Amen. We know the choir's here. Y'all here? All right. Our gospel reading today is um, from the gospel of Luke, and we will be in chapter 16, reading verses 1 through 13. Uh, If you'd like to follow along, I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Now, just a little uh, understanding of where this reading is. Immediately following three pretty um, powerful, powerful parables in the lost sheep, the lost coin, and then the prodigal son, this is the fourth parable Jesus tells in this context, okay? So we're in chapter 16, reading verses 1 through 13. Jesus said to the disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. 
Then the manager said to himself, what will I do? Now that my master is taking the position away from me, I am not strong enough to dig and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, how much do you owe my master? And he answered him, a hundred jugs of olive oil. And he said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly and make it 50. Then he asked another, and how much do you owe? He replied, a hundred containers of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill and make it 80. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into their eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in very little is faithful also in much, and whoever is dishonest in very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The word of God for the people of God. This is kind of a tough parable, right? I think a lot of the parables are kind of tough. I'm going to focus to start off with on this verse 10 because for me it it gets a little easier. Jesus kind of begins to, I guess, interpret the parable but make it a little easier for us to swallow. Verse 10, whoever is faithful in very little is faithful also in much and whoever is dishonest in a very little is also is dishonest also in much. The word faithful, we use that often in Christianity, right? Is that a term you've heard growing up? A term you hear pretty often in church? Faithful, you hear it outside of church too. If a person uses that term, you, you usually understand what they mean. I think about the way I've used that term, faithful. Um, you know, I've used that term in funerals a lot. If I'm describing someone who is faithful, I'm usually describing somebody who is very simply shows up from week to week, right? They're there, and I think that's a good start for understanding the word faithful. Maybe for us to remember, just simply start by showing up. I think it's a good starting place. They're present every Sunday, every Wednesday. They're there. They're faithful. But it's a lot more than that, isn't it? We know better. Faithful is a whole lot more than just showing up. And when we look at this parable, being faithful is also about managing well. is another word that we might compare to those two words, stewardship. Managing well, stewardship. You ever talked about that? The fact that this is a parable about stewardship? This this manager was commended in the end, right? Wasn't Jesus using this dishonest manager as uh, he was telling us why he was commendable. I think that's the baffling part about this parable. But that wasn't necessarily the case in the beginning, was it? In the beginning, do you think that there was much to be commended? There's a reason he's called the dishonest manager. He, what he did was worthy of being fired. Now, if this is a slave, 
He didn't just lose his job, right? What else did he lose? Y'all tell me. His house. The place where he lived. So he didn't just lose his job, he also lost his place of residence. He lived in his master's house. This was perhaps a great reason to panic if you are this fellow. But in the end, or in the beginning, he was not doing something that was very commendable. So let's talk about, remember where this, what this parable follows, the good or the lost sheep, the lost coin, the prodigal son. Might this also be yet another parable about second chances? About a God who continues to offer second chances? Might that also be a possibility? But it's also about stewardship, about managing well those things which God has given us. And even, I would even adding like multiplying those things that God has given us, which seems to be a theme of stewardship. And I just want to take a second and talk about all the parables that there are about stewardship and managing well and multiplying those things that God has given you. I'm going to just list a few. Are you ready? A tree known by its fruit. The parable of the sower. Think about these, y'all. The lamp under a jar. Hide it under a bushel? No. The parable of the mustard seed. The parable of the yeast. Parable of the ten pounds. The parable of the wicked tenants. Do you think that managing well, multiplying, growing, being a good steward, do you think that that probably has a little bit something to do with this message that Jesus is talking about? being faithful in little and being faithful in much. You know one of the things that keeps us from being faithful? We see it in this parable. Our mindset, the way we think, the way we see the world, what happens to us when chaos strikes. The mindset. What do we do when we've lost something that is very important to us. Take a moment, internalize that. What do you do when you lose something very important to you? Grief. I know I've done this in the past. I have these, I don't know if it's a moment, a day, or days, weeks. I, don't, I go through this period of, woe is me. Poor me. I'm a victim. Why did this only happen to me? This is awful. Now, we see something very commendable in this dishonest manager. We see something in his mindset after he's lost everything. Does he do that, y'all? What does he do? I mean, he does. He takes inventory, but he knows I've just lost my job and I've just lost my house. Y'all, I don't see this fellow going into a woe is me kind of an attitude. What does he do? He makes a plan. He sits down with pencil and paper and he begins to devise a strategy. Is it dishonest? Jesus says it is. But it's a strategy. He doesn't panic. He doesn't 
complain about his situation. In fact, I would even add that maybe he is, understands that he is responsible for his situation. And he begins to go to work. Do you think there may be a little bit of a message for us today in 2019? What he did and what we should do, instead of focusing on what is lost, is focusing on what resources we do have available to us and devising a plan, a strategy purpose y'all that's quite simply commendable now let me tell you what I believe this is not okay this parable that Jesus is telling us this is not Jesus telling us that we need to wait until we're in a chaotic situation might you agree I think there are plenty of other parables that talk about managing well that you don't wait until you're in a desperate situation to start devising a strategy or a plan. This is not Jesus commending laziness. But the idea is still there. Don't panic. Don't throw a pity party. Don't see yourself as a victim. But figure out reality. What is the situation you're currently facing and deal with it? I'm not, I don't know what people in here are dealing with who may be battling depression, whatever things are going on in your life, how difficult the circumstances you're facing because because I don't want to minimize how hard sometimes it is just to wake up in the morning and face the day. I don't want to minimize that. But I do want to encourage you that our God is a God who cares and invites you into a deeper purpose. He does not want you to be miserable. He does not want you to be without purpose without joy, without hope, without creativity. And I think that's what exactly Jesus is talking about here. Even when things are tough, we still have access to our own creative abilities. There's something that we could do to give ourselves purpose. Folks, it's 2019. And as I ask you all to consider what kind of news, I th- thought about what kind of good news that I want to bring today, and I think it may be just as appropriate that I ask you all, what kind of good news do you want to hear? What would be good news to you? Because I think we do. We fall into this rut. We look at the news. We look at all of these things going on around us. And we don't just say, woe is me, but we say, woe is the world. How did we get into this mess? And what do we do? We become so overwhelmed that we do nothing. We manage poorly. We wait and we watch. Maybe we want another Savior to come. That's not the message of this parable. This parable is one that invites us all into action, to purpose, and to a way that is commendable. It is 2019. And things are not going to be the way that they were in 1940, 50, or 60. And that's okay. Because everybody here is just as responsible as I am 
for carrying good news to the world. And I don't need to stand up here and tell you how to do that because guess what? Every person here has been given by God a creative mindset. There are millions of ways to carry good news to people. And you all have exactly what it takes to know in your heart of hearts, in your soul, what kind of love to share with the world that needs love. So maybe this morning, the good news is that you have a purpose. You have a role. You have a responsibility. The good news of Jesus Christ is very good news indeed. And no matter how desperate the world may look, we still have a purpose. And in fact, maybe because of it, we can make a difference. And we will make a difference as long as we manage well. As long as we continue to choose faithfulness. We will choose faithfulness. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Loving in God, loving holy God, we just ask that you help to show us the way Help us to be shrewd and wise and creative and to develop a plan that is pleasing in your sight. Help us to know how much and how important relationships are in your kingdom, that they are far more valuable than any gold, than any money, than any resource that we could ever have, that relationships are the key to your kingdom. God, give us purpose. Give us joy us to grow your kingdom for the sake of your son and our savior jesus the christ in whose name we pray amen i think if we do manage well that is exactly what's going to happen we're going to usher in the kingdom of god it starts with one person the mustard seed the yeast The tree that bears good fruit. Managing well. Lauren Cole could get excited about things that are going on in her church. So excited that it becomes infectious. She begins to go out. She tells Warren Cook about all the good things that she's doing for the sake of Jesus Christ. Well, her excitement is so infectious that Warren says, well, I want to be a part of that. So Warren and Lauren begin working together. And all of a sudden, two more people see what they're doing. And they say, hey, I want a part of that joy. I want a part of that purpose. And now they've just doubled their efforts and four people are joining. When all of a sudden those four people see the other four people see the good work that they're doing, guess what? People want to be a part of that. They are going to multiply and it will continue to grow the kingdom of God. That's the gospel. And if it really is truly the gospel, there will never, ever, ever be a time where you say, okay, we've reached enough people. There will never be a point where you say, we've reached enough people for the sake of God. All it does, all it knows how to do is grow. That's love. Folks, I invite you to commit to that kind of gospel, to that kind of Jesus Christ. And this morning, I invite you to make that commitment to yourself and to your God as we stand and sing number 276, O Jesus, I have promised. Let's stand together and sing.
thank you all for being here today. I want to remind you, if you are a member, to stick around for the budget vote and, um, and for the deacon vote. Um, all others, um, if you want to exit out the back, if you don't want to hang around for the business session, but thank you all for being here today and for your commit, continued commitment to the kingdom of God and to the body of Christ in this church. Will you all join me in a word of prayer? May we all be blessed by the God of hope, love, and peace. And may we take that blessing out into the world that we too might become a blessing to others.